Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog. Also, keeping it free. Blogspot.com. Let's talk about a crime that took place in our history that I think deserves your attention. Today is March the 31st, 2020. Right now, let's talk about a theory that exists in some circles. To understand the modus operandi behind the JFK assassination, one may need to look at the assassination committed by an expert marksman roughly 30 years earlier. First, some background. In the early 1930s, the head of the Chicago mob, right, called the Outfit, was a gentleman named Frank Nitti. Now, as you could imagine, Frank Nitti did not get along with the mayor of Chicago, Anton Cermak. Now, on December 19th, 1932, a duo of Chicago detective sergeants, right, men in law enforcement, Harry Lang and Harry Miller, decided to pay Frank Nitti a visit in room 554 at 221 North LaSalle Street in Chicago's downtown area. As they get to the address, they see a plainclothes officer, Chris Callahan. They invite him to come with them. Right now, here's what we know. They enter the room. Detective Sergeant Lang shoots Frank Nitti in the back, the neck, and the chest. Right? He also suffers a flesh wound himself. And he makes the claim that Frank Nitti tried to injure him. And so the shooting was justified. The wrinkle here is that Detective Harry Lang, the man who shot Frank Nitti, as well as Harry Miller, happened to be part of Chicago Mayor Anton Cermak's security detail. Right? These were the cops protecting the mayor of Chicago. So, of course, Nitty is accused of murder. At the trial, the plain clothes cop, Chris Callahan, testified that Nitty was unarmed when he was shot. When asked about how Detective Lang suffered a flesh wound on his arm, Callahan, from the stand, said he must have shot himself. Right? Frank Nitti got acquitted of second-degree murder. More importantly, at that trial, Detective Sergeant Harry Miller testified that Harry Lang had received $15,000, big money in the early 1930s, to kill Frank Nitti. Right? Now, Nitty's acquitted, but what's important here isn't even the trial. It's the idea that Nitty thought that the mayor of Chicago was trying to kill him. So, two months after the attack on Nitty, on February the 15th, 1933, President-elect Franklin Delano Roosevelt is in Miami. He's in the back of an open car in the Bayfront Park area of Miami from where he is allegedly giving an impromptu speech. It is nighttime. Standing on the running board of not the car FDR is in, 
but the car next to FDR. In other words, some distance away from FDR is Chicago Mayor Anton Cermak. Now, we don't have film of this, right? Recollections differ on the spacing. Just be aware of that. But within shooting range, standing on a chair, is five foot tall, 32 year old bricklayer, that's what he did for a living, Giuseppe Zangara. In his hand is a 32 caliber pistol that he bought, presumably on a bricklayer salary during the Great Depression economy for $8, which would be roughly $160 in today's money. Zangara starts firing. After the first shot, others around him grab his arm. He continues firing, shooting some people around him. Only one person suffers fatal wounds, and that's Chicago's mayor, Anton Cermak, who was standing on the running board of the car next to FDR's car. Now, at the Dade County Courthouse Jail, Zangara confesses. He says, and here's the quote, I have the gun in my hand. I kill kings and presidents first and next all capitalists. Now, this is interesting because, of course, Zangara is an immigrant who came to the United States. He's also a naturalized citizen of the United States. It seems a bit odd that he would be down on capitalism after immigrating to a capitalist country. Now, most historians view Zangara's actions as an attempt to kill the president-elect of the United States. FDR would be sworn in less than three weeks later. Some even blame the wobbly chair Zangara was standing on for his inability to hit FDR his intended target. Right? Keep in mind, too, Zangara is not using a rifle. He's using a handgun. But there are those who question this version. According to reports, Zangara, 16 years earlier, had been an expert marksman in the Italian army. He also had a clean shot before anyone grabs his arm. He hits the mayor of Chicago, who's not even in FDR's car. Maybe the Chicago mayor was his real target. And he did so with a gun that seems a tad too expensive for a bricklayer to afford during the Great Depression. Also, the timing of the shooting is curious, right? The shooting is less than three months after members of the Chicago mayor's security detail shot an unarmed Frank Nitti. And like Jack Ruby, Zangara happened to be sick. Doctors told him that his stomach ailment which left him in constant pain, was incurable. There are many questions. What is known is that FDR did not get hit. He was ultimately sworn in as president. The mayor of Chicago got hit, died days after being shot. Zangara was put to death in the electric chair. And his last words were, Viva Italia. Goodbye to all poor peoples everywhere. Push the button. Go ahead. Push the button. Let me hear from you. Much of this Zangara story is all over the internet. 
right? Understand how history could have changed. FDR's vice president was against the New Deal. Had FDR been killed, it's possible the New Deal may not have been enacted. Right? Food for thought. Also, isn't it interesting that you have a guy who was a member of the military or had been a member of the military, had some proficiency, right? Was an expert marksman. And yet he decides to be obvious in his attempt to shoot at fill in the blank, either the president or the president's motorcade, people around the president, in such a brazen manner that by the time he's ready to shoot the second shot, people are already subduing him. As for him continuing to fire, right, was that to hide the real target of his assassination plot, right? If you shoot other people, the paper the next day and reporting the crime looks a little bit more cluttered than if you shoot the mayor of Chicago and stop firing. Let me hear your thoughts. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.